Hey, what's going on? It's Frank from the Paleo Mama with Jackie Ritz. Uh, I wanted to come on here really fast because I want to help you get better sleep. So if you like this content, please like, subscribe down below. Let us know that our content's on point because we want to help you get better sleep. Over the years, I've had the opportunity of being able to talk with a lot of patients in reference to sleep and their issues that they have with it. And I've been able to come up with some really good tried and true methods to be able to actually help you get restorative sleep. I know that a lot of us have some issues when it comes to understanding why sleep evades us. And so I am here to try to help you with some tips. There's about six or seven tips that I have to help you get better sleep. Now, some of these are going to seem kind of mundane and, and pretty common sense, but the thing is, though, is that we barely put them in practice the way that we should. And I want to talk a little bit about food intake and some of the other things that we can come in touch with over our day, but then also really be able to have some really great tips in the bedroom to be able to help us get really, really good sleep. One of the first things that we do is that we need to realize that the bed is for two things and two things only. It is either for sleep or for hanky-panky. That's the only thing that the bed should actually be for. People do too much Netflix binging in bed. They do too much reading, you know, crazy, like, novels in bed that are like big page turners and stuff like that. Or they just simply study. Like I was a culprit of like when I was going to school to become a, a PA, I would actually study in my bed. And so what that does is it sort of like hardwires your brain. Believe that the bed is not where you find your place of rest. That's the only reason why the bed was ever designed is to help a person get to sleep. The concept that we're going to talk about is what we like to call sleep hygiene. What we do in order to ensure that we're going to be able to get those eight hours of good sleep. Now, I say eight hours because that's about all you need. We don't want to be getting too little of sleep, of course, but then we don't want to be getting too much sleep. You know, these folks that are sleeping 10, 12 hours, we're not babies anymore. We're talking to adults here to be able to help get good sleep. And so we want to shoot for that magic number of eight. There's been studies that have shown that people do best with about eight hours of sleep. We are able to fall into the different sleep cycles because we have what is called non-REM sleep, and then we have REM sleep. By getting eight hours of sleep, our body is naturally programmed to be able to work from non-REM through a moment of REM, but then get into really deep. And so when I say REM, I'm talking about rapid eye movement. That's the moment where if somebody is wake it, woken up in REM sleep, that is usually when you're either dreaming or when you're having a nightmare. And so that's when you have those very vivid experiences that you actually can remember exactly what you were thinking about or dreaming about or having a nightmare about if you're awoken from those periods of sleep. But anyway, I say all that because eight hours allows us to get into the stage three and stage four of sleep. With sleep, when it comes to NREM sleeping, there are four stages. That stage one is sort of like, you know, kind of that listfulness, maybe 30, you know, 15, 30 minutes of sleep. Stage four, which is like nice, deep, restorative sleep. And that's what I want to help you do. In order to build a house, we have to start with the foundation. So I'm not going to necessarily represent taking any medications, doing any supplements, things like that. I want to help you get adequate sleep by following these simple tips. First thing is, is that we need to talk about caffeine consumption. Caffeine consumption, of course, is a stimulant. When we wake the body by having caffeine within two hours of wanting to go to sleep, our body is going to be naturally rejuvenated. Couple that with if you're a smoker, uh, you're going to have that nicotine also going through your body. And we want to make sure that any of those stimulants are out of the body in order to ensure that we're going to be able to get nice restorative sleep. The other thing is about alcohol. Some people have a nightcap. And the thing about alcohol is that we end up consuming alcohol. It helps us get to sleep, which is a lot of the reasons why Americans actually turn to consuming alcohol before they go to bed. But the problem is, is that alcohol interrupts sleep and it doesn't allow us to get into those deep stages of sleep that we were talking about. The next thing that we want to talk about are naps. A lot of people like taking that typical siesta or that afternoon nap. There is nothing wrong with an afternoon nap, but the thing is, is that we don't want it to last any more than 30 minutes. 30 minutes ends up being too much time to where we will end up if we actually do get into it, but we can get into a deeper sleep. When we take a nap, we might accidentally put ourselves into a 
plus situation of sleep. And thereby, when we go to bed, we may end up actually feeling non-tired because our body has restored a little bit. So make sure that we limit these power naps to less than 30 minutes. 15 to 20 minutes is more adequate and ideal. The next thing we wanna talk about is exercise. Exercise is fantastic. We need to make sure that we're doing some sort of functional movement or exercise most days of the week. The thing is though, is that we don't wanna be doing very strenuous exercise before we go to bed. A lot of studies that I've seen will say, don't work out strenuously about two hours before you go to sleep. I've seen some other articles four hours before you go to sleep. Regardless, light stretching, light exercise, yoga, meditation, totally fine for doing within that window of when you want to go to sleep. The next thing we want to watch out for is types of foods that may cause us problems. So I'm thinking about anything that are spicy foods, heavily fried foods, things that will give us indigestion. You guys know what it is. If it's cheese or any type of dairy, or if it's uh, gluten products, make sure that you're avoiding those before you go to sleep because you may have issues with indigestion, which I know that always kept me issues with trying to go to sleep. So avoid those particular trigger foods, if you will, in order to be able to get restorative sleep. The next thing, and it may seem completely rudimentary, is natural light. Folks, we are in a society these days where people actually don't get out from their cubicle or behind their desk and get out and enjoy fresh, amazing sunshine. Our bodies work on something called a circadian rhythm. It is almost a 24 hour period that our bodies are naturally programmed to be able to distinguish the difference between light and dark. There are some other hormones in there, melatonin being one of the larger ones, that helps us understand that when it in fact starts getting dark outside, our bodies are going to start adapting by feeling more tired at night. But regardless, we need to get out and get natural light. Vitamin D is super important for our bodies. We need that natural light to help our bodies understand when it starts getting dark, that's when we need to go to sleep. So get out and get some sunshine. All right, and then the last couple of things that we're gonna talk about are specific things that we can do in order to actually get restorative sleep in the bedroom. Like I said, the bedroom is for two things and two things only, and one of those is sleep. And so what we wanna do is we wanna create something called a bedtime routine. You know, it works like I, I'm, a, I'm a father of two kids, and bedtime routines work great for helping my children get really great sleep when they were babies. And so I urge you to consider an actual bedtime. Mine is 10 to 10.30. That is the moment where I want to be asleep. And so pick a time that you want your head to be on the pillow, everything is put away, and you are actually asleep. When I look at 10.30 as my starting time, I backward plan from there. And so I know that it takes me like three to five minutes to brush my teeth. It'll take me upwards of 15 minutes to take a shower. It'll take me maybe another 15 minutes to read a really great book. So what I'm doing is I'm working my way back from my uh, time, my target time of being asleep and thinking about those things that lead myself up to the moment that I am in bed. The things that I am making sure that I avoid right before I go to bed, I'm not checking my email, I'm not playing with my phone, I have a book that is light reading. I tell you what folks, I can't read a book that actually is a page turner. And so I find something that is really good, sometimes educational, actually most of the time educational, not a lot of pictures, a lot of text. That way I can sit there and read it and naturally I will start feeling sleepy after about 15 to 30 minutes after reading this, or excuse me, of reading this book. And so I think about those things that lead up to that moment when I wanna actually be asleep. Some people who are watching this video might consider meditation or light stretching. Totally understandable, really great uh, thoughts to have. Um, excuse me, going for like a light walk around your house. These sorts of things to help you unwind and relax are really great. One of the things that I found out that a lot of my patients were doing is that they go to bed and their brain is full of stuff to do the next day. Well, what I used to offer and what ended up being a pretty good idea for them is get yourself a journal. Just get yourself some paper, right? Write down on it. Jot down your to-do list if you need to or jot down thoughts that you have on your mind. It's amazing how when you think about writing it down, you can now 
rest assured it's in that book and you can put that back that book right there on your nightstand and they will be waiting for you the next day when you need to tackle them. Write your to-do list, put them in that book, close that thing and put it to bed because you want to get to sleep as well. Lastly, let's talk about your sleep environment. Is the bed too hard? Is it too soft? I feel like Goldilocks when I say this. Are the pillows right? You know, are, do you need a firm pillow or do you need a soft pillow? Do you need a, a C-shaped pillow that you want to snuggle with? Um, you know, you got to think about all of these little characteristics that happen because you need to be comfortable while you sleep. You want your room to be as dark as you can. You know, some people will put up blackout curtains, if they will, that they can draw during the evening. Um, some people need to, you know, wear a mask or possibly some like earmuffs, if you will. Uh, a lot of people need white noise, you know, that way they're not, their brain isn't focusing on what was that. Is that this? Is that that? So they'll put on some white noise. There's plenty of great apps that you can download that have different types of white noise where it's crickets or maybe a frog chirping or a, a fan just simply running. Um, all of these are different types of white noise element that you can have. I wouldn't recommend playing a lot of music because music uh, can actually be stimu uh, stimulating. And so if you do, make sure that it's that nice, somber not very bassy and all that sort of thing music to help you relax. The other thing you want to think about is the temperature of your room. 68 to like 71, 72 degrees is ideal to help you sleep. And one of the other things that we like to do is we like to actually diffuse essential oils. There are some essential oils that are great for calming and for relaxing that we put those on usually about 15 minutes before we even enter the room. And so when we walk in, it feels almost like we're walking into like a spa type of environment. And it helps us sort of like subconsciously know that sleep and rest is coming up. And that's what I, my hope and desire is for you. So I hope you got good benefit out of this video. Like I said, like and subscribe. Comment below. I would love to answer your questions. And please let me help you in your journey toward great and unbelievable restorative sleep. Thanks for watching, everybody.